Guys, what's up? Welcome back. Dan here as always. We're here at the workbench and we're ready to do some more modeling. Um, this car I saved for particularly this video. Uh, I'm going to be doing this car to sell uh, so you guys can actually watch out for this when it's done. Uh, so I'll put a link in the description hopefully uh, once I get the car done so you guys can check it out on eBay when it's done. So I'll just go ahead and put that out there. What are we working on today? Well, if you look at the title, it's a real box box car. Okay, so there's a couple of variations of these. Um, the most common and most popular one is the 50 foot uh, single door railbox version. This is the Atherin car, the FMC version, and the older railbox script paint scheme. So this is the more popular one. Um, there's a couple variations. Intermountain does some really good cars like this and the new script. And I think Atherin might have thrown a couple paint schemes on these too with the new script. But this is an older one so we're going to get to do a lot more techniques on this. And basically we're going to be showing fading techniques, grime weathering, graffiti, um, pitting, scratching, etc. Uh, so this should be a really good project for you guys to see and kind of really dissect my techniques. You guys can see how I actually am going to go about and do this. So I think it should be pretty fun. Now, I know most of you automatically are going to be thinking we're going to be doing one of the old school uh, ghost lettering rail boxes. Not in this video. Um, I'll try to do another one later on where I can show you guys actually how to make the yellowed lettering. Um, but we'll save that for another day. Right now we're just going to do a more common plain Jane real box here. So we'll go ahead and get right into this guys. I think this will be a fun... Okay, so the car is on the workbench here. As mentioned, this is an Atherin 50 foot box car we're going to be working on. Notice it's missing the trucks and that's because I had to take the trucks off uh, to replace uh, the trucks on another car that was damaged. Uh, this is actually a flood refugee uh, from the basement flood I had last year. It was actually underwater. I lost the box to it and uh, some other parts but I was able to replace them. The car is not physically missing anything except the trucks but I've, I will replace those later on but right now we're just working on the main car body so the trucks can stay off in the background here I got another Atherin box car and this is another one I'm going to do later to sell so you guys can also keep an eye out for this I have it on a workbench because I was doing some uh, uh, touch up paints to this as well because it was also involved in a flood so these are both flood refugees um, but I'm going to try to fix them up and sell them here and do them to a good home hopefully so that being said there's the car we're going to be working on number 37991 so unfortunately I cannot find photos of the actual 37991, however I did find pictures of a similar car in the same number range, 37999. Uh, typical Athen, they always choose the numbers that aren't actually, you know, uh, photographed uh, so that they can get away with the prototypical inaccuracies, but whatever, you know, whatever, that's, that's what they do, I guess so. Anyway, um, most of these pretty much weather the same. You'll see subtle variations in uh, paint chipping, uh, the deterioration of the rail box lettering. Um, obviously, some of these completely go to a complete ghost lettering where it's yellow and then the rest of the car body is grimed over. In this case, it's a more common example of one what we're going to model in this particular model here. You guys can see we have all of the corrosion and uh, basically a red oxidized tint, especially towards the base of the car uh, where all the rust is streaked down. We got tons of pitting and scratching on the doors. The TTXX in the background here is completely faded and that's something we're going to work on first. And you can see all the graffiti and we're going to model this graffiti on our car. And then of course the standard grime on the trucks, couplers, you can see some scratching, rests on the end, it's a little bit of kick up spray, dirty couplers and some pitting on the roof as well. So uh, other than that too you can see the whole of course the whole car body's faded and the lettering's faded. Uh, so we're going to basically do all of the above uh, and then some. So this will be our kind of basic reference, especially for the graffiti and the weathering here. This will be the car I'll be working We're set up at the workbench here. We're ready to go. I will show you guys the colors I'm going to use to start this project off to fade this X here. Um, and you guys don't need to necessarily get extremely technical and use the exact same colors I'm using. But I'll go ahead and show them to you. I'm mean, going to always use Anita's brand acrylic because these are light, thin. Uh, they're just thick enough that they coat very fast and well, they work very well. Uh, it's like the perfect grade of acrylic in my personal opinion. I'm using a light turquoise for the blue to model the faded blue. And I'm using vivid pink for the red. Okay, So we'll go ahead and start with the blue. Now, as you guys can see, I'm going to pretty much take this right out of the cap, but essentially what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build up a thick first layer and I'm going to be using my fine number 10.0 atlas brush fine tip very fine tip and I'm basically going to be filling in this tiny little area now you can do this very very fast which is great uh, since it's only the one now obviously we got to do this on both sides too 
So it's just very important you fill all this in and take your time with it. So now I'm doing the pink here and it's just like before you just get in with a fine brush slowly but surely just fill in your little areas. If you make any little mistakes you can use a uh, micro brush to clean up the area resharpen the little lines so if it goes over like the border of the line you can kind of clean it up with like a micro brush if it's really bad you can just clean the whole thing up with a q-tip and start right over again that's the beauty of using acrylic it's very forgiving <laughs> but just make sure all this is covered okay for the fade here I'm using of course my airbrush and I have a diluted mixture of white acrylic and 50% isopropyl alcohol uh, this is the consistency of skim milk so if you guys are diluting paint down, aim for this consistency. You may have to adjust this and make it a little lighter, uh, but right here is the perfect formulation. It sprays on very, very nicely. So I'll go ahead and hook up my airbrush here. Give a test spray. Always test spray before you hit the model up. You want to make sure this stuff's flowing out so you don't have any bubbles or blotches or anything because then you'll have to go back and clean this up. Keep in mind I have not dull coated this model yet. We are going to dull coat it after we do the fading. So that's very important. And I'm not wearing gloves here either, but that's just because I'm pretty controlled here. So, go ahead and start. And I just give light coats at a time. Now you're not going to notice this for a little bit. You're going to slowly see a change in color. But it takes a little bit of time to kind of fade this down all the way. But if you saw those photos, that yellow is pretty well faded. So, we're going to really tone this down here quite considerably. I'm just kind of going down the seams and hitting this at all these different angles. But just make sure with the model uh, properly faded down and clear coated we can go ahead and start applying the grime. If you recall in the photos the car has a pretty decent amount of grime where you can see the rust tone in the, the paint and so what we're going to basically do to create this is my standard fallback, my uh, standard technique, my fallback technique of washes. So, what I do, I take my earth brown, uh, needed acrylic, and I take a little bit of flat black, and I essentially create a, uh, a color basically like this, and I load it up onto the tips of my bristles on a relatively large width large dry citadel brush like this. I transfer this brush to a bowl of water and just slightly dilute it, not too much. I then take the model and start running it down the sides like this. Very sloppily you'll notice, but that's okay. Get a little bit heavier application here. There we go. Don't be afraid to just slather it on. It's not going to be perfect. It's not meant to be. But the only thing you really want to pay attention to here is keeping the strokes vertical. And make sure you cover it, the ribs and everything at every angle so you don't get any weird clean shadows. You want everything to uh, be grimy here at the top up here as well. And then I'll take a Q-tip. Then I'm going to simply just run it down the side very very kind of roughly here just in certain little areas just very quickly I'm also working on the top of the roof here as well with the same effect however I won't be using the q-tip method to clean up anything just gonna be filling in all this in with a dark wash the entire thing don't forget to do your ends as well which I already did in this case so you guys can see the ends have the wash the sides are pretty much done. But right now I'm just working on the roof and getting these covered as well. Okay, so we're going to look at the graffiti now on this car. And um, again, I'm just copying prototype photos uh, to the best of my ability here. Um, I'm going to do my best. And um, I'm just looking at the photo right now and I'm just kind of trying to do 
uh, position everything here and it's just good to refer to your prototype photos and just try to figure out where everything is so I know there's a decent little tag right here that's covering this section here and then the rest is basically scribble so it's actually pretty easy to do here so I think this will be a good card to kind of show my methods matter of fact it's a style of graffiti I get asked about all the time people always want to know how I do my white scribble and stuff so it's really simple I used my white acrylic paint and I use a fine tip brush I just simply take the finest sharpest tip brush that's why I love these atlas brushes they have such a fine sharp tip and I'll use that I'm gonna take it over to my bowl of water and bring it over a little bit here so you guys can see I'm gonna just dip it just the tip not the whole thing just the tip in the water I'm gonna dip it into the cap of paint and you'll notice I only have the finest tiniest little bit of paint on the tip there it's wet it's primed it's ready to go and I'm simply going to transfer it to the model now in the photos of this graffiti the graffiti is kind of faded and we're gonna weather this over later on so it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect as long as it follows the main guideline of how it looks in the photos which I'm gonna try to do here try to zoom in this. It's kind of hard to do uh, with this lighting but I'll try to do my best here so we're gonna go ahead and do this S and I know it seems kind of tedious but really once you get this motion and everything going and you get a feel of how it's going to respond on the model you can start going relatively fast it really doesn't take that much time I can probably have this kind of work done here in about 15 minutes um, that other little tag will take a little bit longer but we can go into kind of some more detail with that so we'll come back to that in a second but we're just going to start filling all this in according to prototype photos here it does kind of cover the data here as well so I'm not trying to be perfect here it's just following the basic shape and then this comes down like that and then this comes down like this but notice my hand motion here as well it's very 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 still you need to have a very gentle hand to do this you can't rush this and you have to be very patient filling in with the smaller little tags is basically the same process you just take your time and you just write them in with the sharpest finest tip brush you can use and you just follow prototype photos to get the lettering most of the time a lot of this scribble is kind of ineligible but as long as you get it close it'll look fine so there's the tags under the door. We'll go ahead and put the one on the door itself, which is a pretty small, pretty small little tag here. We'll just very carefully write it in. Excuse me. just trying to make sure everything looks nice and even here another item you can use for graffiti like this on these doors is a white prisma color pencil these are really good for painting graffiti and in this case I have some really blotchy old graffiti that I can do here with this and I'm just gonna basically fill it in but it just goes to show there's there's more than one technique for doing this graffiti so it's kind of your call there what materials you use so I kind of bounce between the brushes and the Prisma pencil just depending on what kind of graffiti I'm trying to create here but you can see it's very effective and you can do some uh, fine deep little details it does work for it 